we had considered the case of the store just fancy in our previous lecture what was the situation now, over here in a school in the town there was a fancy dress competition and the parents of the children were buying the dresses from this store just fancy now as you can see just fancy had quite a lot of dresses to offer now the shopkeeper once he had sold these dresses in various amounts wanted to find out on an average how much money had he collected so in order to find out how much money he had collected he simply added up the money that he had collected from every individual dress so that gave him the total money he earned now he wanted to find out the average per customer who paid him what amount of money so in order to do so he came up with the term mean he wanted to find out mean and thus he divided the total money earned by the total number of customers he had served now the total customers served we had found out was 25 the sum of money collected that is the total money he had earned by selling the dresses came out to be 21950 and the total number of customers is 25 so on performing this calculation he found that the mean is 878 now to the shopkeeper this value 878 did not have much meaning why because he found out from the prices of the dresses that there were very few dresses above this value most of the dresses he had sold were below this so in order to make sense of the data he came up with another value or another term in order to obtain this term what he did first was he arranged the data in ascending order as you can see the data that is the money he has earned by selling individual dresses has been arranged in ascending order from the least to the highest now what the shopkeeper does is he finds out the middle value of this data that is the middle most observation on doing so he finds that the middle observation or the 13th observation is equal to 700 now this 700 is known as the median of the data now what is the utility of the median the median is the middle term of the data and since it is the middle term it divides the variance or the observations into two equal parts or in other words we can say that it divides the variance in two halves this is the utility of the median and with the help of this value the shopkeeper can say that half his customers have paid less and half his customers have paid more than this particular value so to the shopkeeper this was more like an average to him in his mind now let's see how we can calculate this value mathematically instead of having to fish for the middle most value now we have been given that there are 25 observations or in this data set there are 25 variates now 25 if i call it n that is the number of observations is an odd number so when the number of observations is odd let us see how we can find out the median when the number of observations is odd in this case 25 we can find out the median with the help of a very simple formula what is that formula that formula is n plus 1 by 2th observation thus if we apply this formula let's see what we come up with so this is the formula and over here we replace the value of n with 25 so after i replace the value of n with 25 what do i get i get 25 plus 1 by 2 that is 26 by 2 so that means the 13th observation will give me the median so if i can find out the 13th observation that will give me the median so previously as we had counted 
This is the thirteenth observation. Thus, since this is the thirteenth observation, we can clearly say that mathematically we have obtained the median to be seven hundred. So this value seven hundred divides the data set into two equal parts. Now let us consider another scenario. Over here, we consider the case where a teacher has taken a surprise test of twenty students on total marks ten, and these are the marks that have been obtained by the individual students. So, firstly, in order to find out the median, we must arrange the data in some particular format. So, in this case, it is arranged in the ascending order, and this is the array data. So as you can see it is arranged in ascending order from lowest to the highest so now we have to find out the middle value now in this case n that is the number of observations which is equal to the number of students who took the test is equal to 20 so let us see if we can apply the previous formula or not so in order to find out the median we apply the previous formula so we replace n with its value that is 20 plus 1 by 2th observation so when i do so i find that i get 10.5 now what do you think the 10.5th observation will be the observations are obviously integral numbers like i can have the first observation second observation third observation but how can the number of an observation be a fraction 10.5th observation makes no sense so clearly when n is even we cannot apply this formula so let us see what formula is there to apply when n is even so when n is even the formula that we apply is this n by 2th observation plus n by 2 plus 1th observation whole divided by 2 this is going to directly give us the median when n is even so let us see what we get when i say n by 2th observation what do i get n by 2 is 20 by 2th observation plus 20 by 2 plus 1th observation that is 20 by 2 plus 1th observation and the whole thing divided by 2 So 20 by 2th observation is the 10th observation. So let us find out what the 10th observation is. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. 10. This is the 10th observation. So I write 6 that is the 10th observation plus 20 by 2 plus 1th observation is the 11th observation. As you can see 10 plus 1 it's the 11th observation. so this is the 11th observation the 11th observation is 7 so i write 7 divided by 2 6 plus 7 is 13 and 13 by 2 is equal to 6.5 thus 6.5 is the median the required median of the given set of data so we can say 6.5 which lies somewhere in between 6 and 7 is the median for this given data set or the given set of observations so we found out how we can calculate the median when data is given in the discrete format now over here what will happen if we have been given data in the form of a simple frequency distribution table now as you can see the first column is for the variate the second column is for the frequency of that particular variate now in order to find out the median we have to calculate the cumulative frequency so in this case how do you think we calculate the cumulative frequency let us see for the first variate the cumulative frequency will be 1 for the second variate the cumulative frequency will be its own frequency plus the cumulative frequency till the previous variate so it will be 1 plus 1 that is 2 for the third variate it will be 2 plus 1 3 for the fourth variate it will be 3 plus 
6. And likewise, 6 plus 4, 10. 10 plus 4, 14. 14 plus 4, 18. And 18 plus 2, 20. So thus we have obtained the cumulative frequency column and filled it up. So we see that n in this case is even. And in order to calculate the median, we apply this formula. So in order to find out the median, I have to find out the n by 2th observation and the n by 2 plus 1th observation. Now since n is equal to 20, n by 2 will be 10. So I have to find out the 10th observation as well as the 10 plus 1 or the 11th observation and divide it by 2. So let us see how we can find out the 10th observation and the 11th observation. So let's look at the cumulative frequency column. Over here, I can see that the number 10 lies in the cumulative frequency column. So this means that 10 students have obtained marks that is equal to or less than 6. Now since the 10th student has obtained 6, we can say that the 10th observation will be 6. And we can directly read this from the cumulative frequency column. So I write the 10th observation is 6. Now I need to find out the 11th observation. If you look at the cumulative frequency column, you will see that the number 11 is nowhere to be found. So does this mean that an 11th observation does not exist? Such is not the case. Now number 11 will lie in between 10 and 14 because these are the two numbers that you see in the cumulative frequency column. So number 11 lies somewhere over here. Now what did I tell you? I told you that 10 students have obtained marks equal to or less than 6 and 14 students have obtained marks 7 or less than 7. So this means that the 11th, 12th, 13th as well as the 14th student have obtained mark equal to 7 because they couldn't have obtained marks equal to 6 because that 6 is obtained by the 10th student. So in this case, 11th, 12th, 13th as well as the 14th student have obtained mark 7. So in this case, we say that the 11th observation is 7 and I write the 11th observation equal to 7. So 6 plus 7 divided by 2 will give me the median. And this is true in any case. Let us say that we have a particular observation whose value you cannot find in the cumulative frequency table. Let us say 5. So if you look at the numbers in the cumulative frequency column, you will see that 5 lies in between 3 and 6. Now we can say from this that 3 students have obtained marks equal to or less than 4 and 6 students have obtained marks equal to or less than 5. So 4, 5 and 6 or the 4th, 5th and 6th students we can say have obtained mark 5. So whenever we have a situation like this, we always consider the number which comes after that given number. In this case, the 5th observation would have been 5. Similarly, the 15th observation would have been 8. So in this manner, we can proceed to find the particular observation when we cannot find the number in the cumulative frequency column. So in this case, we have 13 by 2, which gives us 6.5. Now, so far we have dealt with discrete data. What do you think will happen if you are given data that is grouped or data that is provided to us in the form of classes? Now, firstly, again, we will do the same thing. That is from the frequency given to us, we will calculate the cumulative frequency. So as you can see, the cumulative frequency has been calculated. And if you recall, an ogive has been drawn. That is with the help of cumulative frequency, the respective points have been plotted. And corresponding to their classes, the ogive has been drawn, as you would recall from our previous lecture on how to draw an ogive. Now let's see how we can use this ogive in order to obtain the median. So n is an even number, 30. So we term a particular quantity a, which is equal to n by 2, 
Why? Because in this case, n is 30, which is an even number. So n by 2, that is 30 by 2, is equal to 15. So a is equal to 15. How do we use this a? I will find out where a or 15 lies on the y-axis. And from that point, I will draw a straight horizontal line which will meet the ogive at some point. Now, I can see that it is meeting the ogive at a particular point. From that point, I will drop another perpendicular on the x-axis. So let's see how. Over here, I start from this point and I draw a perpendicular and make it meet on the x-axis. So the point 15 on y-axis corresponds to this particular point on the x-axis. Now if you have to read it from the graph, it will be read according to the scale that you have taken in order to plot the graph. In this case, the ogive. So this point in this case corresponds to a value of 6. So we can say that this particular value is the required median in our case. And the median class, which is an additional information, is 5 to 10. Because the median lies in between this. Thus, the median class is 5 to 10. So as you saw, it is very simple to calculate the median with the help of an ogive if a continuous class distribution has been given to us. So this is how with the help of the ogive, the median can be found out very easily.